Today we live in a moral battlefield. Faceless, faceless forces of social pressure and worldly concepts of correctness are constantly challenging God's unchanging principles for everyday living. Satan tries to drown out the Holy Spirit's calm and steady directions. False slogans fill the atmosphere, pressuring people to breathe in deceptive and ungodly thoughts, words, and deeds. Let me offer some examples that are already too familiar. God instructs that human life is sacred. We're made in the image of God. We are forbidden to murder. See Genesis 1, 26, Exodus 20, 13. Satan retorts, didn't God create everyone with free will? Freedom to choose is a God-given right. Freedom of choice becomes the popular refrain, even though the expression is never uttered in a complete thought. Freedom to choose what? And so, 60 million babies are murdered through the exercise of free choice. Similarly, God provided very explicit instructions about marriage and intimate relationships. Jesus reinforced God's definition of marriage. Take a look, for example, at Matthew chapter 19, verse 5. And he spoke of God's standards for intimate relationships. See John chapter 8, verse 11. But Satan's response is, didn't Jesus instruct us to love one another? And didn't he say not to judge others? By twisting these concepts, Satan spins the false narrative that loving others requires us to encourage people to openly defy God's standards. Satan battles against God's unchanging standards by distorting scripture and encouraging people to do whatever they please. Doing whatever we please without application of moral standards results in disaster, as was demonstrated repeatedly in the book of Judges. See, for example, Judges chapters 19 through 21, recording the anarchy and lawlessness resulting from rampant sexual perversion and selfish actions that were devoid of any moral standards. Mindless groupthink promotes a persistent spewing of untruths. George Orwell, in a moment of prescience, pointed out the further society drifts from the truth, the more it will hate those who speak it. Standing firmly on God's principles causes Christians to become targets for hate. So, how are we to withstand the torrents of hatred directed at those who openly speak about God's truths? First, we must realize that our battles originate from forces of evil in the dark and spiritual realm. These are Satan's schemes, and therefore we must outfit ourselves with God's spiritual protective armor. The Apostle the Apostle Paul directed followers of Jesus to be strong in the Lord so that we can take our stand against the wiles of the devil. That's Ephesians 6 verse 10. The devil engages in trickery and deceit to undermine uh, godly living. Accordingly, we must be strong in knowing God's scripture and then we must put on the full armor of God so that we can stand our ground. That's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Being strong in, the, in our knowledge of Scripture is the equivalent of basic training in the military. The armor of God is ineffective if we cannot distinguish between the truth and a lie. The first listed element of the armor of God is the belt of truth. Everything hangs on it. Everything depends on the truth. Unless we wrap ourselves in biblical truth, we stand little chance of resisting the deceptive practices of the devil. Therefore, first and foremost, we need to know the word of God. Second, the second element of uh, the armor of God is the breastplate of righteousness. You and I are natural-born sinners. Having a protective cover of righteousness, therefore, is not something of our own making. Righteousness that protects our soul from destruction comes from our acceptance of Jesus. See Romans 10, verse 9. 
2 Corinthians 5.21 explains, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might have the righteousness of God. The righteousness of Jesus becomes a barrier protecting us from harm when we accept him as our Savior. The third element of God's armor is footwear, shoes of peace. The Roman soldiers guarding Paul at the time of his writing about the armor of God likely wore shoes that had spikes in their soles to prevent to provide a sure footing for them as they stood their ground. Christians are to be firmly planted in the godly principles of morality, but we are to speak truth in love, in peace. Ephesians 4, verse 15. We are known by our love, as John, 3, uh, John 13, 35. Accordingly, we resolutely uphold God's word, but do so in love, standing in peace. Fourthly, Paul listed the shield of faith that extinguishes the flaming arrows of Satan's attacks. Faith in God's word hardens us to the fires of anarchy and confusion that are shot off by demonic forces seeking to undermine order and morality. Faith enables us to see beyond the circumstances of the moment, knowing that God will use all circumstances to advance his kingdom, and that prevails ultimately. Take a look, for example, at Romans 8.28. The helmet of salvation is the fifth defensive component of the armor of God. It's Ephesians 6.17. Knowing that we are saved enables us to face adversity with a mindset of confidence. Our thoughts are protected by the assurance of God's saving grace. God is for us. We are listed in the book of life, and Jesus has prepared a place for us in God's heavenly kingdom. Therefore, we know that no demonic force can prevail against us to bring lasting harm to our soul. We are saved. Each of these elements of God's spiritual armor protects us as we stand our ground on God's moral principles. But the last provision is made, that is made in God's spiritual armor is this, the sword of God's word. That's Ephesians six seventeen. God's word becomes a spiritual sword, a defensive and offensive weapon, only when we can be proficient in his word. Effective use of God's sword of Scripture requires training. The old-fashioned sword drills come to mind where children were drilled in the content and location of various Scriptures. Jesus kept the sword of the Word ready for immediate use. For example, when Satan tempted, attempted to exploit the vulnerabilities of Jesus in his human form, Jesus swiftly drew from the Scripture to fend off Satan's temptations. We need to keep scripture ready to fight off the temptations that seduce us in our everyday life. Skilled use of the sword of God's word requires constant training in scripture. Effective wielding of the sword of God's word can cut to the bone in the course of demonic attacks. See Hebrews 4 verse 12. The battles we face every day originate in the dark spiritual realm of, de of demonic forces. God has provided protection for us as we endure these daily challenges. We are called to be strong in the Lord, that is to put on the full armor of God. So as we reflect on the pervasiveness of moral perversion bombarding us today, Consider these questions for introspection, if you will. Question number one, what spiritual battles are you facing today? Question number two, how are you taking a stand for God's kingdom? And question number three, what steps are you taking to protect yourself with the full armor of God that set forth in Ephesians chapter 6. The battles we face daily originate in the dark recesses of the spiritual realm. 
Confronting these unseen forces requires us to train for spiritual warfare and to fully use the protections that God has provided for each one of us. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand firmly against the wiles of the devil. Buckle, the, buckle God's truth around you. Everything hangs on the strength of that belt. And wear Christ's righteousness as your cover but do so in peace and in love. Shield yourself from the flaming accusations with a shield of faith, knowing that you are protected by God's plan of salvation. But first and foremost, become proficient in the use of the sword of the Spirit that is the Word of God. Wielding, God, wielding God's Word requires constant study of His instructions in the Bible, the Bible is our handbook for survival, but is useful only to the extent that we devote ourselves to quiet and prayerful study of its precepts and principles. We must be steeped in the Word in order to fend off the persistent clamor of demonic social chatter and false standards of political correctness that steamroll many into mindless submission. Be strong in the word of God.